uh, today. So let's go ahead and get started. Again, uh, you can forward this to your friends, forward it on your own personal Facebook page, especially if you're a manager. Because as, as a manager, I'm a manager too, and you can call it supervisor, you can call it a director, appointing authority, mayor, CEO, whatever. If you've got direct reports, you're a manager. So we're going to use that, that word manager as you're managing people here today and try and give you some tips when it comes to, uh, to some ideas about training as well. There's my buddy David joining us from Chicago. Good to see you, my friend. Thanks for... Thanks for jumping in for a few minutes. So here's the thing. As a manager, we've got a gazillion things on our plate. We've got a million things going on. So now that you're putting training into this topic, I've got a human resources department. I've got a learning and development department. I've got a, a, a coordinator. They're the ones that can do the training. Well, that's a bad way to look at it, especially in light of this post-pandemic uh, era we're about to go into, where we've got employees who may have different needs. And so um, I was recently at Disneyland a couple of weeks ago, and you could tell, you could tell that there was a heavy turnover and a bunch of new cast members out there. Uh, you could just tell in the way that this, a few of them I interacted with seemed unsure uh, a few of them uh, were clustered in groups, getting group training, getting walking around, because I think we're seeing a lot of turnover now in this post-pandemic era, people picking and choosing different jobs. So is the manager's role to make sure that the learning and development and training is there? Absolutely. Absolutely. So here's what I got for you today. I got three realities and five tips, three realities, five tips that we're going to use to kind of work our way through this. And I might even have a sound effect or two. Let's see if this works. All right, here's reality number one. I don't even know if that worked. Sounded cool. All right, number one, you may, <laughs> you may not even be a professional trainer. And you're not. Most of us in management, I mean, I'm lucky that I'm in a management role, but I've got a background in learning and development, training and development, HR. A lot of us who are managers don't have that. So I don't want to freak anybody out by saying you've got to go get a certification. You've got to learn something. What I'm trying to do is just, just to, to remind you is that even though you're not a professional trainer, that doesn't mean you should be hands off. It doesn't mean that you don't get involved in the just-in-time training or the immediate feedback or things like that. You still have to get involved. All right, reality number two. You've got a lot of other things to do. You've got a lot of other things to do. Budgeting and strategic planning and project management and the financial side. I already said, you know, budgeting. but. And then if you're a working manager, a lot of us have to deliver and not just coach and develop. So you got a lot of things on your plate. I'm not discounting that. I'm not trying to add something else to your plate. I'm just trying to raise your awareness that, number one, you're not a professional trainer. Number two, you've got a lot of other things you have to do. But what about number three? Yeah, employees need you. Employees need you. All right. There is a higher demand by employees these days to, am I doing it right? Am I doing it wrong? Am I being coached correctly? Let me know where I want to go. In addition, career development. How can you help me get to the next role? Where do I want to be? So you've got all these things and you're like, good gravy. I just want to do my job <laughs> and go home. But the reality is if you're a manager, part of your job is the coaching development and the training of your direct reports. So let's go ahead and share five tips. These are things that I've learned along the way about being a, a, a manager, but also a manager who trains and coaches and develops their own, their own staff as well. And let's see if I can uh, get these things going. All right, here's tip number one. Very up and happy. How about this one for that one? All right, forget it. So we'll just stop with the whole sound effects. Number one, just acknowledge your skill set. Acknowledge your skill set. What do you have and what are you good at? So we can't stand back and go, well, I'm not a trainer. I don't know what to do. The reality is what are you good at? Are, are, are you good at building relationships? Are you the type of person who can give constructive criticism and not tick your employees off? along the way? Are you good at walking the shop floor or walking the area and seeing what your employees are doing? Um, are you good at written? Are you good at verbal? Uh, do you have good body language? 
Uh, are you a, you know, we were doing uh, Robert Childani's uh, um, uh, six styles of influence in a training class and likability came up. So the idea of likability, you know, that's a style of influence that can help you. You need to know what your skill sets are, whether it's through a Myers-Briggs profile, the DISC profile, knowing what you do. So where can you shine? Because all of us aren't going to be able to have the skill set to just train and, and and do this and then i know the addy model and analyze design develop and we're not doing it right and we got to do a gap analysis and a needs analysis and what's the roi we may not have that skill set but what skill sets do you have as a leader know what they are so that you can help train your employees second thing is going to be know your role and what i mean by that is where do you need to fill in the gaps from a training perspective? So again, you know, we'll use myself as an example. Let's say that I bring on a brand new training advisor, brand new person to do leadership training. Maybe you're the accounting manager. You're bringing on a new accounting uh, person. Maybe you work in law, healthcare. You're bringing on a new nurse and you're the nursing man, whatever. What is your role? Because when it comes to training, your organization probably has a process in place from, from new hire orientation, and then you got to go through on-the-job training, and then you've got maybe another department that does some of the skills-based training, or maybe they go somewhere. If you're in police or fire, you go to the fire college or the police academy. What's your role? So again, is your role to you know, teach them about the expectations of the department and train them? Is your role to for me to shadow them in the training classes and give them feedback and not be hands off on that is my job to reinforce what they've learned in some other training classes. This is a big one for us because where I work, we have people from all different agencies. They're always coming in uh, from different cities here in, in Jefferson County. And part of our struggle is we're sending everybody back to their organization with the hopes with the hopes that their manager is going to say things like, hey, how was your training class today? <laughs> you know, hey, how was your training class today? What did you learn? What can you share with me? Uh, hey, how are you going to apply that? That to me is the minimal role of a manager. If you send somebody to a training class somewhere, when they come back, it should be almost mandatory that they report something out that they share what they've learned, that they tell you that the money and time and energy that they've spent, you know, doesn't happen. So, hey to April, Michelle. Hey, Linda. Hey, April. Good. Good to have you all watching on Facebook Live. So, again, be thinking about what is your role when it comes to that and and, and where can you step in and maybe fill, fill some gaps. Uh, tip number three, y'all set the example as the manager. Set the example. Never, please, not just for my job security, but for everybody, <laughs> job security, never downplay training. Never. I, I, when, when I first got working here in local government, there was a city, and I always tell this story. There was a city that said, can you please come out and bring your team and do mandatory customer service training? Everybody loves that. We want to do it for police and fire and public work, but every single city employee through a two-hour mandatory customer service training, we want our city to be known for great customer service. Okay, fine. We did the whole check the box thing back then. So we came out. Well, it turns out later there was this one department. Uh, their people were there with their arms crossed. They were looking stern. You could tell that they didn't want to be there. So when, when I asked them later, I said, I said, why are you all in such a bad mood? And they said, well, it's, you know, they said it's top down. I said, what do you mean it's top down? They said, well, our highest person, whether it was the deputy director, the chief, whoever, came to them and said, hey, I want to let you all know, I don't want to go to this stupid training any more than you do. I know it's a waste of our time. Let's get in there, sign the paper, just be there and then get out. So the leader was telling their employees at the very beginning, this is a waste of time. Again, set the example. Please don't do that. Your, your organization should be an example for lifelong learning. Your organization should be saying, we want people to learn and grow. And there's so many more opportunities these days. I mean, you as the manager can find TED Talks, you can find books, you can find YouTube videos that are part of learning and development or, or training or HR and still get with your employees, especially if you're having frequent one-on-ones with them about their, what they want to do with their lives. Where do they want to go? How can you help them get there? Where are their weak spots? So set the example. And also, 
set the example when you go to a training program, when you go to a conference. All right. I, I make it mandatory that when my employees go to a conference, when they come back, we have to set up a 60 minute debrief with PowerPoints and everything because they're going to go to like six breakout sessions and four keynotes. I want them to share everything that they learned. Do I have to do the same thing? Absolutely. If I go to a conference, I've got to come back and set that up and share, you know, here's also set the example, set the example for learning. Uh, number four, ask for help y'all. This is, this is a, a, a no brainer. Um, your human resources department, if you have one, do you have a training and development department? Do you have a training coordinator? Um, talk with these partners that you have and say, what are you teaching them in this training class? How can I reinforce it? Maybe if you are not aware of things you can do, I don't know how to do just-in-time training, Pete. I don't know how to how to involve myself and 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 you know, because my way is to go up there and say, you're doing it wrong. Do it this way instead. Well, that's not the best way to train somebody. The best way to train somebody is to walk up and say, show me what you're doing. All right. Tell me why you're doing it that way. All right. Are there other opportunities? Okay. Other ways that are more efficient or more creative? So again, have that dialogue, have that dialogue, with them, but don't be afraid to ask for help. Again, you can always call the personnel board of Jefferson County, our training department. You can ask us, we'll give you some resources. Have you known about this? Have you known about that? We want to be a resource for you as well. And finally, y'all got to self-manage your priorities because after watching this just for about 15 minutes now, you 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 hopefully you're already thinking, I don't do any of this or I only do some of this or my people go to training classes but I never ask them what they learned. I just assume they did it. I have them sign a piece of paper. I don't you got to self-manage your priorities. Your life priorities and your work priorities. Like I mentioned at the very beginning, we go back to reality number 2. You got a lot of things to do. You've got a lot on your plate. So, you know, this may not have to be the number one thing that you're doing. This may be three, four, five, or six. Maybe it happens on Fridays. Maybe it happens on different days. But knowing that is really, really important. And there's my buddy Keith who's joining us. Hey, I appreciate you too. Keith is a lifelong learner. He's out there all the time too, really sharing information uh, with, with his people. So uh, thanks for tuning in today, buddy. I really really appreciate you. So, all right. So those are the things real quick. Let's do a summary. All right. You're not a professional trainer as a manager, or you might be, but most of us aren't. Okay. You got a lot going on on your plate, but your employees need you. They need you so much. So acknowledge what you're good at. What are your skill sets when it comes to training and learning and helping your employees get better? Okay. Know what your role is compared to human resources, compared to the learning and development department. Are you supposed to follow up? Are you supposed to, uh, to encourage? Are you supposed to, you know, help them get better and set the example around training as a manager, you should never walk around and say, I've only got four years to retirement. I don't have to learn anything else. You know, set a lifelong learning example, ask for help from your partners. If you need that, and again, don't overburden yourself. You know, this this was not designed to say you're not doing enough. This was designed to say, always remember that training is a minuscule, a middle, a large. It's it's a portion of a manager's job, no matter what. So really, really hope that you can take that and, and go with it. So again, managers are trainers too. That's all there is to it on this Friday. So uh, 12 o'clock Central, hope on the East Coast you're enjoying this. And on the West Coast... Happy Friday, 10 o'clock to y'all. Uh, we'll do more of these next week, next month. Just follow us at Personnel Board of Jefferson County on Facebook. At Personnel Board of Jefferson County on Facebook. And again, you can also follow me on my personal LinkedIn page as well. So thanks, everybody. Have a great Friday. Thanks for watching. Go out there and be a great trainer as a manager.